Mr. Kasser, you were the rapporteur for the dossier in the European Parliament in which Slovakia joined the Euro on the 1st of January 2009. What does this mean for Slovakia and the monetary union as a whole? Well, for Slovakia it means a lot. Uh, a year before my country joined, joined uh, the Eurozone, Malta, and uh, it, it, was, it wasn't an easy task because you have the Maastricht criteria, you have a rate of inflation, the national debt, and unemployment. So these are targets uh, in which you have to really make an effort in your country to, 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 to reach them. In Slovakia's case, this wasn't easy. A, a ex-communist country, they recently joined the European Union. So in a short period of time, they managed to reach all these levels. Obviously, they have a program now to continue improving their economy. And uh, if you go to Slovakia today, there's a national consensus that they, they did the right thing. We're doing our utmost to, to form a, a, an economic European government so that we can harmonize more our economic systems, which is not easy to do with all those countries involved. But I think that uh, with the help of, 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 and the commitment of every country, we will soon be able to, to, to find the right way so that we'll get out of this crisis as, as quickly as possible. What would the economic or financial crisis have been like if we didn't have the euro, the euro which is an EU initiative and used today by some 327 million Europeans daily? Well, I think it would have been a disaster for all of us. I look at the United Kingdom today. It's a very strong country, uh, a very strong economy. They're not uh, inside the Eurozone as yet. And look at their economy today. Unemployment is, is rising. A lot of uh, jobs are, are, are at risk. And uh, if you look at my country, Malta, our currency uh, was used only in Malta, 300, a bit more than 300,000 people. We would have had the same situation as Iceland. But today we are in the European Union, in the European Eurozone itself, and if you look at our economy, it is still stable. Our jobs are secured, and uh, if we weren't inside the Eurozone, it would have been a, a different picture. We hear a lot of talks and discussions, but what action has actually been taken, and what proposals or initiatives has the EPP put forward? We had the French presidency in the last six months. Now we've started the new Czech, um, Czech Republic presidency. But during the French presidency, um, and he comes from our party also, um, he, ha he was very uh, efficient in, in, in all his, his negotiations when it comes to the economy uh, in particular. Um, he has come up with a roadmap, um, and uh, this roadmap uh, is to be implemented during these coming months. The best thing uh, President Sarkozy did was to convince everyone that we should have an economic government. And that means that uh, our economies are based on, on a common approach, not a singular approach as we had until, until very recently. We don't have any hidden agendas. Um, people know exactly where we stand. We are very consistent on what we say, <clears throat> what we promise and what we do. And this is what um, makes us different from other political parties. We care about the people, and before we decide on certain issues that might affect the people, the daily lives of our people, we are very careful not to leave anyone behind. We want everyone to be part of the success of the European Union, and that is the difference between us and the other political parties. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to Dialogue TV today. Now, if you at home have questions on the EPP's policies regarding the economic crisis, do get in touch with us. You can find details on our website, or why not send us a video message. That's all for this interview, but do join us again soon.